during the Delphi skill sprint, I mentioned the swipe transition effect. And someone said, oh, could you do a page turn effect? Because that's kind of where it is. And I'm like, oh, I think so. So that's what I've built here. This is the C++ version of it. And what it has is there's two memos you see here. And each memo is full of text, in this case, Lorem Ipsen. And I include the page number here so you can see what page we're on. She should be on this one as well. Make it bigger. There it is, page two. So random text with the page number on it. Now, uh, right now it only turns this way. I implemented the return back. But just come over here, grab the page, and turn it over. Now notice, you see there it says page three on the back. And then page four is the page I'm going to. So really nice page curl. I let go. It finishes the turn. And I can do this again. All I have to do is move it over a third of the way, or a quarter of the way, and it'll know I'm going to turn the page. If I move less than a quarter of the way, it turns back. That's it. If I move off, it finishes it for me as well. Really cool. I had a lot of fun with this one. So let's take a look at this. This one here has a, has a lot of code. Not really that much code, but it has code and layout elements to it. So what we have is what we see right now is there's this visible layout and it has two memos on it, memo one and memo two. The visible layout also has another layout over the top of it, which I call layout glass. And that does two things. First of all, that captures all the mouse movement, whether it's over uh, memo one or memo two. And it prevents the user from when they're dragging, when the mouse is moving with the cursor down, then the memo is like, oh, you're selecting text, and all of a sudden text gets selected, and I didn't like that. So I could have uh, probably hid selection or something like that on the memo to prevent that from happening, but I needed to capture all the mouse movement as well, so I just should put a layout over the top. Now, what you could do is you could look at the mouse movement with like a gesture and say, oh, is it from the edge and moving in? All right, this is, they're turning the page, and you could invoke different behavior, make the layout visible. If it's somewhere in the middle of the form, then you could have different behavior. You could let them select text, stuff like that. So there's certainly some pre-processing you could do to change that behavior. So the swipe effect is on the visible layout, which has the memo on it. And we also have this thing here, the swipe point. And what this does is this finishes with the swipe animation, which is a path animation, finishes the page turn. So if the user lets go anywhere in the process, then it finishes it off. And that's what that purpose is there. Now, there's another layout that you can't see because it's underneath this that I call the layout virtual. And it also has two memos on it, memo three, memo four. Memo three is here, memo four is there. And those are used for the screenshot purposes. You actually never see those, but the they're laid out on this uh, virtual layout, and then I do make screenshot on the layout virtual on the layout virtual in order to get a layout of what the page the user's turning to looks like and what the back of this page looks like. So the, actually the swipe effect has two bitmaps on it, has a target and a back. These are actually both the same bitmap, but the back bitmap is flipped horizontally in order for it to show up correctly. Uh, if you take that out, you'll see that it's backwards because it's on the back side of the image. Okay, so let's show you some of the code here. Probably won't go through all of it. Uh, let's see. So here, this is the finishes the turn. So when they let go with the mouse or move the mouse off of it, this is where it finishes the turn. This is where we're using the swipe animation. So we set the swipe point up and then set a path. We look to see if the mouse is if they've moved more than half the distance or a quarter of the distance, if they have, then we have them, the path take the animation all the way to the end. Otherwise we have the path the animation take it back to the full client width in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, and we start the animation. If you were gonna let them swipe from both corners, so like I said, right now, right, it only makes sense to swipe from this corner, you would just have to look at the mouse and move the mouse cursor which is the corner. Let's see, I do that in the constructor here. Right here, corner point and mouse point, those are right now set to the upper right-hand corner. You would just change these to the lower right-hand corner if they have their mouse down there when they start the movement, and then you get the behavior you want that way. Uh, -da -boom -boom. 
So when the mouse, when the, they tap, when the mouse goes down, that's when we're going to go in here and we're going to grab the screenshot. Okay. So we grab the screenshot and we set the mouse point to wherever the point they put the mouse down on. And so the mouse point is the point of the corner. That's the corner of the page is in the page curl is set to the mouse point. So we go through and grab the screenshots. We same screenshot. We apply the first one to the target, flip it horizontally and apply it to the background. And we also bring the back, the layout virtual. See, so bring to front and that renders that. Remember we talked about that. You have to have it visible before it gets rendered. So we just bring it to front, render it, and then push it back to the back again. Here we go. As the mouse is moving across the layout glass, the glass is the clear one in front you can't see. All we do is set the mouse point of the swipe transition to the current mouse position. If the mouse leaves or the user lets go with the mouse up, then we do finish turn. You know, I didn't test this on a mobile device. Mobile device, you might want to do this with interactive gesture instead of the mouse movement. Uh, it might work. I, I should have tested that. The, the, I know the transitions work, but whether or not this code, because it looks at mouse instead of touch points, might be different. And then here's the finish. All the finish does is it fills the memo with the new text and disables the animation. That's really all it does. It looks to see if we actually completed the page turn or not. Uh, if we did, then we move the pages that were in three, memo three to memo one, and memo four to memo two, and then get the next two pages. There we go. That's all there is to it. Oh, the swipe animation, there actually is a a live binding in here, bind visually, between, oh, that's for the lorem ipsum. Yeah, so the lorem ipsum came from the prototype bind source. I thought I had live bound someplace else. I guess I didn't do that. But the swipe animation when it processes. So this is what finishes the page turn. Then it takes the swipe or it takes the swipe point position. So the swipe point is what's animated is the swipe point. And it takes its position and puts it in the mouse point. And that's how, now you can't actually see the swipe point. Otherwise it'd be a little circle. You can see the circle on the screen, but it's what's animated. And then that animation is then applied to the mouse point. And that's what gives you that smooth finish. So, and it's a little slower than it probably would be uh, as far as the finish animation, just because it's easier to see here. But then if you're going to do this in production, you might speed that up so that it's uh, faster. And then because the user, user likes to see the mouse, the, the animation, but they don't want it to take any of their time. They want to get back to reading. So anyway, there you go. There's a page turn sample for you.